my top 10 exercises for a six pack. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hi guys, welcome to Buff Body, I'm Dieter. Today is the first part of our top 10 exercises for a six pack. Our top 10 abdominal exercises. Before we can shoot the exercise in itself, we need a little bit of theory uh, to understand it all. Very short, relatively. You have four types of exercise. First you have the anti-extension, which means that your abdominals avoid your body from having an extended back. If you are in a plank, gravity is pulling your hips down, your belly down, you want to avoid that by firing up your abdominals in a plank. That's an example of an anti-extension. Then you have the flexions. The flexions are crunch, much more dynamic, where the abdominals contract and they pull your ribcage towards your hips or your pubic bone. Then you have different muscles in your abdomen that are working for the rotation exercises. For instance, Russian twists or with the band, the twists. Then you have anti-rotation, where an external force is trying to rotate your upper body in comparison with your hips that stay there, but your muscles of your core are avoiding that you actually rotate. So an external pressure is trying to rotate you and you avoid that. For instance, a pile of press. Now those two types of exercises, they work the transverse abdomini and the internal and the external obliques. Apart from that, you also have the hybrids, which work a little bit of different types of exercises at the same time. But because we're working on a six pack, we're not gonna focus on these exercises today. Although they have a huge uh, important role in um, athletic performance, for instance, throwing a ball, those stuff. Um, now the anti-extension and the flexions, they work the rectus abdomini, which are the muscles that are showing up when you have a six pack. Flexions I don't like at all. I don't want to go too much into detail, but today we're not going to talk about flexion, not about these either because they don't um, make a massive six pack, so it's only anti-extension. Five exercises in this part, five exercises in the next part. Those 10 exercises are just a small selection out of a big pool of abdominal exercises, there's many more. A lot of different exercises work in the same way, so it's okay to just for one training pick one or two abdominal exercises that I put rather at the end um, after all the big lifts to really tire out the abdominals. Now, what is important? You have to go with those exercises to failure. So the amount of reps is not always that important for abdominals and then you can play with little systems like for instance rest pause where you go all out until you really can't anymore. You have less rest than you would like to and then hit them again and that you do for a couple of times, two or three times. Always making sure though that you don't compromise your form, that you don't go for hyperextension in your back um, on the planks for instance. All right, for this series of exercises, we do use a little bit of equipment. Not a lot, but we do use some devices. On that note, if you want us to shoot a series of exercises with no equipment whatsoever, just let us know and we'll think of you. Now, these devices, you can find the link towards these devices in the description below. Um, the first thing is foam roller. Second, a set of resistance bands. I showed my exercises now with the black one. A dumbbell, dumbbells, you have in all weights, and a proper mat, Pilates mat for instance. All right guys, first exercise, RKC plank. What is different with a normal plank and why is it better than a normal plank? Normal plank performed with a neutral pelvis, like this, makes that you have a little extension in the lumbar spine, in the lower back. What happens there is, my abdominals aren't doing a great deal, they're not really working, they're being half lazy. It's more or less my spine that is supporting the position, yeah? What's the problem there? Not working the abdominals and when I get tired, the hip and the belly will drop more and more and more and more and that will give a pinching feeling in my lower back because my vertebra are being pushed towards each other, my disc is being pushed inwards and the nerve might get trapped. All right, so no good. 
What are we changing then? You want to do an anti-extension as I said in the theory. That means your abdominals hold the posture so they shorten, they bring the ribcage to the pubic bone or to the hip like this. Flat or even a little bit round back. Much more engagements of the, um, of the abdominals. So from there what you want to do is push the belly button in, squeeze your glutes together as hard as you can. Now you have an RKC plank. If you want to spice some things up, what you want to do now is actively pull the elbows a little bit back. Like this, as if you would like to pull the mat towards your toes. If you can hold that plank for more than 20 seconds, you have super human abdominals. Because this is really hard and you'll start trembling. Alright. Alright guys, exercise number two. One of my favorite favorites. Stir the pot. First of all, let me straighten something up. It's okay to have a little bit of round back in this type of plank exercise because it's an anti-extension. You have to work against the external force. So you have to work against gravity. There's no um, risk of injuring your discs by doing a little bit of flexion in your back. Why? Because as you get tired, you will drop a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, but it's better to start from there and then there than to start from here and then there. Plus, the more you contract, the more active you're using your fibers in your abdominals. So, we're gonna start from this position. A plank with the elbows on the ball, hands together like this. Don't cross them, keep them there, it's a little bit nicer because then they're working separately, the arms. Um, feet so much backwards that your shoulders are on top of your elbows. If you want to make it a little bit harder, bring the ball more front. So this is a harder version. What you do from there is make little circles with the ball in both directions, as if you would be stirring in a pot. Again, don't drop the hips, don't push the hips back, plank position, from there circle left, circle right and that's stir the pot. All right guys, third exercise, body saw. Here more than ever, it is important to avoid extension of the back. Again, it's an anti-extension exercise. You want to keep the midsection tight. You want to think as if there's a burning candle underneath your uh, belly button. So if you would drop the belly, that would mean that you're burning your belly button. So you have to push the belly button up, but you want, don't want to stick your glutes up either. You want to hide your glutes, so you want to turn the hips in a posterior tilt. You want to press the pubic bone front, squeeze your glutes, like the RKC plank. Now this is the basic position. Now we're gonna make it a little bit harder. So how do you do that? You bring the feet back so that the shoulders are behind the elbows. From there, what are you gonna do? You're gonna rock back and front, like a human saw. So, there you go, the abdominals are avoiding an extension of the back, so they stay tight the whole time. If you look at my midsection, nothing changes. The only thing that changes is the angle in my ankle and the angle in my shoulders. That's a body saw. For the pros, with the abs of steel, if you want to spice it a little bit up, what you do is you put a foam roller on top of your ankles, and instead of just rocking back and front on your tiptoes, what you're gonna do is you're gonna roll back as far as you can and you're gonna come front. Not till there, because this is resting. You don't wanna rest, you want time under tension. From there, belly button in, squeeze your glutes, go as far back as you can, and front, and again. So that's definitely the harder version of the body saw. Try it, I'm sure you'll like it. All right guys, next exercise is gonna be the dead bug plus a little bonus, which is a dead bug progression. Again, it's an anti-extension exercise, but this time you're lying upside down. So, look what you have now. You have a round back and you don't want your back to extend. Look, this is why it's a dead bug. Legs are up, hands are up, like a bug when it's dead. It's lying upside down as well. Now, so you don't wanna extend, so at no point you want to turn the hip in an anterior tilt with a bridge underneath your lumbar spine. So you wanna keep the belly button down and you wanna keep the shoulder blades in the air, like this. 
flexion. And it stays in flexion even though, and that's the exercise, you're gonna bring one leg down and you're gonna bring one arm down. I like the version where you do cross coordination a lot. So left leg goes down, right arm goes down, but without dropping the shoulder blade. So you stay high. Now you hold that position for 20, 30 seconds, come up and then you switch. Again, I don't wanna drop the shoulder blades. I don't wanna have a bridge there. I wanna be in flexion, anti-extension. This hand goes back, all right? Come up again, switch. If you do two sets, three sets of 20, 30 seconds, I'm sure your abdominals will be on fire. Then, if you wanna make it really hard on yourself, you follow that thinking process with a band, with a resistance band. You wanna keep that resistance band over your head, like this. With your head on the ground, it's a little bit easier. You wanna make it hard, so you wanna bring your head in the air, and you wanna bring the shoulder blades in the air. And from there, you bring one foot down, the other foot down. If you're a pro, two feet down, but don't bring your belly button up. Belly button stays low. All right, and that burns. So for exercise number four, the dead bug with the band, if you don't have bands in the gym, you could get away with the cable as well. This exercise as well would work as well with the cable. I like um, the one with the band and the dumbbell more because at the end of the range of motion, you get much more resistance downwards uh, with the dumbbell than you would get with the cable. So this one is a pullover, but a pullover where you stick in an anti-flexion position, so around the back where you turn the hips in, belly button towards the ground, then from there you bring the shoulder blades in the air, the head in the air, extend your feet and then you do your pull-ups. Till there, open up, so your arms open up, but your core stays tight, mostly the upper part of your abdominals. There you go. The higher the feet, the easier, the lower the feet, the harder. Always make sure your back doesn't arch. All right, that's it for part one. If you wanna buy these little tools, you can find them in the description below. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please smash the like button. Make sure you subscribe, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.